Hello, I'm Lisa Burkhart Worley, and welcome to Pop Talk. And we hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. This is our Christmas show, and it's going to be so much fun. We have a former NFL player on the program today, and our own Renee Rollins is going to entertain us with some beautiful Christmas music. But before we get to the festivities, say hello to our Pop Talk co-host, Michelle Burden, and our Pop Talk guest host today, Aurora Ortega Guys. She's been on the show before. Welcome, Aurora. Thanks, Lisa, so much. I'm really excited to be here today, but we are so blessed to have extremely gifted people on our Pearls of Promise ministry team. And one of those who has an incredible talent is our Pop Talk co-host and worship leader, Renee Rollins. Renee is going to open up today's program with a Christmas song. It's all yours, Renee. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. And the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Renee. Now to our guest, 
because of my sports casting background, I always love it when I can do a sports interview here on this show. And today we have a former NFL player and college standout on Pop Talk. His name is Louis Trinka Passat. Lewis is a former University of Hawkeye football player, my husband's alma mater. He was named Honorable Mention All Big Ten in 2013. He earned Second Team All Big Ten in 2014. He also earned Academic All Big Ten honors three times, means he's smart. In 2014, he was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams, but a knee injury cut his NFL career short in his second pro season. Now Lewis is in ministry, and we're going to find out more about that. Well, Lewis, it is so good to have you on Pop Talk. We met at a banquet not too long ago, and I said, I've got to get him on the show. And you were so gracious, and we're so glad to have you, uh, you here. And you have such an interesting <laughs> history. Your parents are from Romania. They escaped co the communist regime back in the 80s. I don't think football is a major sport in Romania, as far as I know. But uh, how and when did you decide that you wanted to play pro football? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, when I was really young, I, I between our church services, we were able to catch some of the football games on Fox and <laughs> and whatnot. And I remember I saw these these guys hitting each other, and I was like, "That's what I want to do." And uh, yeah, it was it was ever since then since. I don't know, really young, maybe 10, 11 years old, yeah. Did you think it was a reality, though, when you were thinking about it, or? Um, I just remember it was in my heart, like, the physicality of the game. I loved it. I don't know why. And, you know, my sister, my two older brothers and two older sisters always said that they saw me as a, as a little baby. I would throw myself to the ground, and I would get up, and I wouldn't be hurt. And <laughs> I guess it was just something in my, my nature, the way the Lord created me. I don't know, but... Yeah, ever since I was young, I just wanted to play. That is so cool. And so everything was going great for you. And you were a starter in 38 games in Iowa. You got drafted by the LA Rams, and then you suffered a knee injury in your second season, and your football career was over. How did that affect you? Yeah, um, yeah, my whole life, you know, I, I pictured I was going to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to make it pro. I'm going to be a Hall of Famer and, you know, make all this money and, and, and I'll be good. Right. Um, and yeah, I pretty much, my career ended after that. Uh, I was depressed. Um, I didn't know what to do with my life. I was living in my parents' basement. And, you know, for the next two and a half years, I remember I was just didn't know what to do. I was lost. I remember on my birthdays, uh, it was times where I was like, what's the point of living? Why am I alive? And uh, it was rough. It was very dark. Mm. I bet. Mm. You know, Lewis, we had an opportunity to talk previously, and one of the things that you mentioned about the Philippine mission trip was uh, you had a dream before that. Can you briefly just tell us about that dream? Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I remember every night I would be praying, God, give me a purpose and a plan as much as I enjoy playing football. And it was nothing but silence for two and a half years. And Finally, I, I, you know, I go to church one day and I'm like, God, if I don't hear from you, if you don't show me, tell me what to do, I'm done with you. And mm -hmm. there was a pastor that he knew of me, but he didn't know what I was going through. And uh, he stood up and before he preaches, he turns to me in front of the congregation. And he says, Lewis, God gave me a word for you. That word is just wait. Uh, he sees the desires of your heart. He's not forgotten, but he's working his plan. Just wait. And I was like, that never happened to me. But I remember I was like, finally, God, you hear me. Like, I just needed something. I was like, I don't care how long I have to wait. But I was like, I just needed that. And um, not too long after that, uh, that was in November of 2019. So a couple months later, I remember uh, I, was, I was sleeping and kind of had was having these doubts again. Like, I don't know what my life, what is this going to look like? What does this mean? And I kept saying in my dream, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I remember I heard God just say, I know. And I woke up shaking, and I just got on my knees praying. And basically, for several hours, I was in prayer, and I just had these visions of me getting beheaded. And uh, it was like somewhere in the Middle East. And it sounds rough, but uh, what I felt was the Lord was just telling me that I needed to give up my life for Him. And uh, I was holding on to it. I was kind of scared. And then I remember when I said, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live for you. I remember I felt this peace fall on me. And, yeah, that's, that's when uh, I ended up reaching out to this pastor that gave me that word. And the next trip he was going on was the Philippines. And 
the Lord was like, that's where you're going. I said, okay. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And there was an encounter when you were in the Philippines. But that, when you came back from the Philippines, you came back to Chicago, you decided to move to Texas. What did you, what, talk about what you decided to do. Yeah, um, basically I had gotten a book called Kingdom Man by Tony Evans when I was with the Rams in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody on the team got it. I never read it. And now I'm back from this trip um, and I'm reading this book and I see Dallas Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. And my mentors were like, hey, you need to go to seminary school. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go back to school. I was like, <laughs> done. And uh, have no idea what even seminary is. Uh, and so I'm like, hey, let me Google this. I Google it. And I know on my heart, God said, you know, or put uh, for me to study the 66 books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I Google, and the first thing I see on the website that pops up is we teach all 66 books of the Bible. And I just wow. felt like God speaks to me through that. And I was having an initial hesitancy still because... In my past experience living in college, I was alone, I was depressed a lot, I wasn't associating with the party and the lifestyle, and so I felt like that was going to be the same when I moved to Dallas now, away from home, and I had this conversation with a friend, and he just told me, he was like, Louis, he's like, you were living for yourself back then, uh, doing things what you wanted to do, now you're doing what God wants you to do, and he's going to take care of that. And it's so exciting, Lewis, to live for God and to have him as your leader. I mean, he it's the most exciting adventure that we could ever go on. I know you're finding that out yourself. And you did graduate from Dallas Theological Seminary with a master's degree. And, and, and along the way, you met a mentor. His name is Wade Aaron, and he has a ministry called Christ's Reward. And one of the cool things he does is he carries a large cross all over the United States, which you're now doing along with him. So we've got a video clip. I want to show our audience the video clip. It has some of uh, Lewis's college football days in there as well. And, and he's, you're going to see him carrying this cross across the country. Take a look. Coulter under pressure. Coulter on a keeper. Coulter wrapped up and brought down by Trinka Passant. And the Hawkeyes win it in overtime here in Iowa City. The defense really rose to the occasion as well. Louis Trinka Passant paces the defense with 10 tackles, four tackles for loss, and two sacks. And most importantly, Iowa starts out the season 1-0. of Jesus is just fully committed to, to following God at all costs. He's interning with me right now, but I would say sometimes I'm learning from him uh, because of his passion to, to share the gospel with people, to share the message of Christ. And so he's more than just an intern. Um, he's someone I am encouraged with and learning from as well. And he's an encouragement to, to me and many others. What's happening? What, why do you feel so emotional? I don't know, I just am. I think, uh, I think it's just amazing how the Lord brings everything full circle in a sense to show one old life and old past and that living for Him, there's nothing better. I was in that stadium and 70,000 people were cheering for me and whatever, sometimes chanting my name, but it's not about that. And just talking to this one guy right here and even walking with this lady, I just, there's nothing that's more fulfilling. What a witness, Lewis. How many miles do you guys carry the cross? And what kind of conversations are you having with people when you're walking down the streets? I'm sure this is just a sight. <laughs> so I'm curious to find out what people are saying. Yeah. Uh, it really depends. Um, it depends. On average, it's about 
eight to nine miles a day. And so we'll, what we'll do is we'll fly into a city for about three days, uh, uh, death, burial, resurrection, and, and we'll just share. And people just approach us. We don't uh, engage people. We just kind of let them come to us. And uh, we let them come to the cross. And... Yeah, you get all types of things from we're getting mocked because he has a wheel. That's one of probably the more popular things people like to say. Oh, Jesus didn't have a wheel. And, <laughs> and you know, we'll just laugh with him and we agree, you know. And uh, uh, we've had people that are angry, you know. And But we've also had people that, uh, I'll never forget, I was in Springfield, Massachusetts with him. Uh, we were doing a, a trip there and you know, we were in a rough part of the area and just carrying a cross, cold, and this lady just, from a distance, she sees, she comes out of the store and she sees us. She like stops. And, you know, sometimes when we see people staring, we will like wave and we'll try to see if they want prayer. You know, right. what we usually do is, we, hey, how can we pray for you? Which leads into a conversation about Jesus. This lady comes, she's just crying. And she's like, <sighs> I've been going through such, she's been going difficult times in her life. And she's mm -hmm. like, I really needed a sign today. And she just saw us walking with the cross and she literally opens up to us and just gives her life to the Lord right there. Oh, and that's, beautiful. that's just one story of, of many, but really that's kind of the heart is uh, to just people see the cross. We're planting seeds. Even if they don't engage us, There's we've heard stories of uh, a guy shared one time. He came up to us and he's like, he saw someone carrying a cross many years ago and he was very angry at that guy. He's, he's like cursing him out. I was like, why is the guy carrying a cross? Mm. God used that to plant that seed, and he, this guy started doing research on Jesus, and eventually he would come to the Lord mm -hmm. just by wow. seeing the cross. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So that's just yeah. the power of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so how has this affected you, Lewis? How, how, how has it changed you by carrying the cross? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it kind of, you just... I spend, it feels like I'm spending time with Jesus, uh, and, and then when I, when I put it on my shoulder, it's, I feel, it just reminded me of the, the pain and the passion that he went through, and, uh, but doing it has brought me a lot of courage and boldness, I would say, uh, seeing Way do it, and, and then just stepping out of faith and doing it, and being obedient, and um, no matter what happens, it's, pointing people to Jesus, my faith grows, seeing people come to the Lord, um, or even when we're getting persecuted per se, you know, it's, it's all for Jesus. And I think in it, my boldness increases, my faith increases, and my love increases for him. Um, and I'm just kind of always mesmerized and grateful, like, why would God choose me to, you know, carry the cross? And, you know, I really don't want people to see me. I want them to see him. And, uh, I'm just grateful. You know, a question that comes to mind, Lewis, is the fact that you had this big disappointment with the football season being over. I know, I understand that. I knew I wasn't going to play in the WNBA. I just wasn't good enough. It wasn't even an injury. I can't even claim that. <laughs> but, but then your, that dream ended. So if you look back on the dream ending, how rewarding is it that you're doing this now? I mean, would you, would you give up that dream again? Does that make sense to do what you're doing now? Yeah, people always, you know, when I share my testimony, they go, oh, you know, they kind of they feel sad. But I tell them, I'm like, I've never been happier in my life now um, than what I'm doing. And I'm grateful that I don't miss football. And I, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm not doing it. And I'm grateful that I'm not even, if I were to still be playing, that maybe I would have had success. Who knows where I'd be, you know. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful because ultimately what I'm doing is what the Lord calls all of us to do, is go and share Him, share His love, the hope that He's given us, and it's eternal effect. It's, it's lasting forever, and hmm. there's people that don't know this hope. And the, not only they may know Him, but the, I feel like and I've seen, it's been, He's been misrepresented, even through the church and just growing mm. up. And I, I, I would hope people can see the true authentic Jesus, what I believe and how he lived the Bible is what we're doing is just going and just sharing him and the love of him. And, uh, you know, and I've never been happier and more fulfilled in my life. And I know like when my time has come to, to, to my time here on earth is done, like I know I'll see him and I know he'll say good job, good and faithful servant. So I'm, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. Hmm. Lewis, we got to talk a little bit about uh, during the season, the holiday season, there are a lot of people that don't carry the word you have been mentioning, 
hope. So can you just share briefly, what is a message of hope that you have for people, especially those that are sad or depressed during this holiday season? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, being in that and, and, and it's like sometimes we can question, you know, what, what's, you know, why is God allowing this to happen or, or why is this happening to me? But um, ultimately is, is that, man, I was a messed up person. I was a sinner and, you know, I deserved that. And I, I don't even deserve the life that I had, even if it was sometimes living in my parents' basement um, and all these frustrations. But uh, I think that's just a sin in the world. And the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to kill, steal, and destroy our hope, our future, our maybe even giftings, how we're made. And uh, the, the, the truth is that Jesus sees each and every single one of those people that are going through these times where maybe they feel hopeless. Um, mm -hmm. He's right there. He loves you. You know, he's there with you. Um, he doesn't condemn you. Jesus never condemned and shamed, but he, he just wants to be by your side. And uh, he died on the cross, you know, for our sins. And for me, it was like, why would a God still love me and do that for me? You know, despite all the times I pushed him away, despite all the times I didn't want to have anything to do with him. You know, he, he probably felt that sorrow, but he was still there. And it doesn't require me to do anything. He doesn't require striving. He doesn't require religion. He doesn't require anything other than to just give him my heart. He wants my pure heart, what I'm feeling, even the pain, even the joys. And, you know, and he gives us life, not only on this earth, that he wants to walk with us and show us his purpose and plan for our life. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're done here, we're going to be with him in heaven. And Amen. that's the hope that we have, and there's nothing greater. And Amen. I can't even imagine what that day is going to be like. I think, you know, we always say, we're going to have all these questions, but then I think we're going to be falling flat on our face, mm -hmm. worshiping him, so grateful to be in his presence. It's going to be so glorious. Thank you so much, Lewis, mm -hmm. for joining us on our Christmas show. What a great story you have. And we're just going to be praying for you and wish you all the best and all the ministry work that you're going to be doing in the future. I know he has a great plan for your life, and it's already happening. So thank you again, Lewis. And, and if you want to contact Lewis and find out more about his missionary work, uh, you can scan this QR code, and uh, you can navigate to his website as well. And that website is moderndayorg moderndayorg and we hope you will also connect with us here at Pearls of Promise Ministries. You can email us at info at pearlsofpromiseministries.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Pop Talk Media. And we're on Instagram at pop underscore ministries. You can catch all of our past shows and our award-winning document, uh, documentaries at our Pearls of Promise YouTube channel. And thank you again to our sponsor, Prestige Development Properties, LLC. If you have a project that needs a commercial developer, Prestige Development Properties is the place to go. You can email Prestige at Kerry, K-E-R-R-Y, at prestigedev.net. And we hope you will have a wonderful Christmas and celebration of our Savior's birth. To close out the show, we want to bring Renee Rollins back with another beautiful holiday song. Thanks for watching Pop Talk this year. We'll see you next year. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings. Instead of sheep and I fall asleep counting my blessings when my bank book is getting small I think of when I had none at all And I fall asleep Counting my blessings I think about a nursery And I picture Yes.
slumber in their bed. So if you're worried and you can't sleep, just count your blessings instead of sheep and you'll fall asleep. So many blessings 